Hi and welcome back to Bike Space. So this week we're going to do this rather special giant propel. This is on Ultegra Di2. It's got the tubeless tyres. We're going to service this bike. We're going to update the firmware on the Di2. We're going to put new sealant in the tyres. We're going to clean everything up, new chain, and really get this bike singing and dancing. This has gone through uh, used bike sales. So this is the new owner has brought this bike into us with a couple of little known issues, and we're just going to sort it out and iron this bike out and make it really nice. So initially you can see here that the chain is stretched off to 0.75 over 5 inches and so this is a good time, especially with DI2 and a high grade group set like this, to change that chain. You don't want to be using this any further than that stretch, you want to really be concentrating on keeping everything else in good mechanical order without wearing it out. The grease and oil that was on this bike I think had had dry lube on it at some point and that tends to go very solid and yet reflective so it's got like a film but it's always clogs things up and I, I'm not really a fan of the, of the dry lube. So I think that's what this bike had had on it. So we have to clean all that off of the jockey wheels and the chain set and the group set in general, just to make sure it's absolutely spotless before we put it back together. So we're gonna strip this bike right down. Again, you can see that reflective shine on those components there. That's the oil that's been put on the chain at some point. And yet when I touch that with my hands, that's as dry as a bone. It's dry to the touch. It's not a nice lubricant, whatever was on this bike. And again, you can see it on the front derailleur here. So we're going to clean that up, make sure this is absolutely spot on before we put it back together. So we take everything apart initially. And then actually with this bike, the only thing we put through the old site cleaner was the cassette itself. All of these components, I actually clean by hand. I never put TI2 into the ultrasonic cleaner. Now this was the known issue. The pivot point for the brake pads had chewed away. He'd had trouble getting that out. He, in fact, I don't think they could remove it, but we had a little scheme that we checked before we actually started filming. So we knew that we could remove that. So you can see how chewed up that is. So we got that out initially. And then the front one you can see here is drifting and floating in and out of the caliper itself. The thread inside there are completely gone. And all that was holding that in was the clip on the back and it's not a strong clip, it only sits in that groove. So we're actually going to clean that one up. We're going to put that in the rear and then we're going to put a split pin through the front one so that we can reuse the calipers without changing anything and everything will be fine once we've done that. So that's just something we're going to do along the line. You'll see that as we're showing this service through to the end. The cassette itself has been through the ultrasonic cleaner. We clean that up now, just give that a little scrub down and then we work on the other parts, which like I say, we actually did by hand. I, I didn't actually put those through the ultrasonic cleaner. Although DI2 is like fully waterproof and would, I'm sure would be absolutely fine going through an ultrasonic cleaner. I'm sure there's a few of you out there who've already done that. For me, it just doesn't sit comfortable to do that. So I tend to clean these parts, DI2 especially, just by hand. And it's just nice anyway, you know, occasionally just to do things by hand and do them the old fashioned manual way of you cleaning and get everything nice. So I'm cleaning up the jockey wheels there because they're thick in, in that dried off oil. What I actually do with those components where I'm cleaning oil off is I actually re-lubricate. So I make that oil wet again and then it will wipe off relatively straightforward and easy with warm soapy water and a microfiber towel. So you can see there the jockey wheels have come up. So I've just re-lubricated that. That's now made it all wet and moist. That's not degreaser, that's just an oil-based cleaner. And it just literally makes it re-wet. And then I can just wipe that off with a microfiber towel and give that part a nice cleanup. So we just wash it down again. You can see I don't get the electronics too wet. Again, they are all sealed and I'm sure they're molded into resin in some way, but I just clean that up by hand. So again, we just use the detailing brush for the chain set itself, clean that up nicely. And then once I'm happy that everything's just clean enough to go back on, I can then start to figure out the rebuild process and just make sure we've got everything nice on the bike. Even things like these through axles, they actually are notorious for corroding because they're aluminium and often in a stainless steel shaft all the other way around and you can get the galvanic corrosion there. So I just make sure that I clean those up and re-lubricate those as well. You can see here a little bit of Loctite on the jockey wheels and a little bit of lubrication on the pivot points. Again, these points are sort of almost self-lubricating, but over time things wear out so I do like to just lubricate the pivot points and just give a little bit of grease on the springs just to make sure that they're not going to go rusty and that everything is going to perform as it should moving forwards just to make sure it's all nicely sorted out and, and ready to go and again you can see with the uh, through axle here a little bit of grease on the shaft itself a little bit of anti-seize on the threads and we're good to go there Next up we clean up the pads, so I just use a brass bristle brush there just to clean the pads front and back and you can see how that's already beginning to bring them up and then I'll just skim those on my band scourer so you can see here the band scourer 
note the band on that because I recycle or reuse that at the end and so you can see here what a difference to those pads the top ones haven't been cleaned yet the bottom ones are ready to go and look like new so before we deal with the disc we're going to actually rotate this tire I like to get the logos above the valves this is a tubeless tire but actually this tire was on the wheel the wrong way around it's a rotational tire and it was actually rotating the wrong way around so we pop the tire off we'll turn it round we'll line up the logo we'll put new sealer in and it'll be absolutely ready to go for the new owner and he'll know he's got fresh sealant inside that tire some people clean that sealant out i like to leave it because if there are any holes that have been bunged up by cleaning it out you're effectively doing away with the puncture repair that's already within that tire so i turn the tire i top up the sealant new valve in there we did both front and back um, this is one of the rare times you'll see me use an airline. I actually like the old fashioned traditional pump tire up. I like the marginal gains of that. We actually use an airline to blow up a, a tubeless tire because you need that full inflation and quick. So that tire is now ready to go. You can see here on the rear cassette on the free hub there, it's just a little bit of debris that's wrapped itself around the cassette over time. It's things like that that can just drag the wheel down, drag your wattage away as you're riding a bike because there's a little bit of friction there. So we clean off things like that. And I actually use brake cleaner on these hubs so that it doesn't go in and penetrate into the bearings. And then we just wash the wheel down just to check it all, just to make sure the integrity of it's okay and that the spokes are all okay and that everything on that wheel is nice. So if you are new to the channel, please do subscribe. If you're a regular viewer, drop us a comment, click the like button, hit the notification bell and you'll get to see these videos every week. And now you can just see, I'm noticing this disc here is quite scored. So I'm now using a part of that band scourer that you saw earlier. Once they're worn out and they're nice and smooth, I cut them down to do the discs like this because they don't break up in the little holes in the disc. So they're nice for sanding. So they're like an emery cloth, a band scouring band. And that's a lovely way of just taking all those scores off that make that disc sing when it's under breaking. And then I just use a little bit of brake cleaner and wire wool on the center there just to make that a little bit fresher. And that, that disc is okay for a few more miles. I did actually put an advisory on this service about the disc being a little bit worn. When you run your fingers down it, you could feel the wear in that. So that disc has got plenty of miles in it, but that will need addressing at some point, maybe at the next service. So I also cleaned up the front disc, which was actually okay. And then once we're happy with that, everything's ready to go back on the bike, we then deal with the frame. So we're gonna detail the frame down. So we're initially just using a soapy wash and a detailing brush just to get the initial areas of built-in debris clear. And then I just use a microfiber towel just to wipe that down. And then we use our lovely big softy brush, which is a nice soft nylon brush. It's almost like a sponge. So it just is a nice way of cleaning the bike down. And then again, I just use a microfiber towel to dry it off between the, the sort of processes. And then I'm gonna actually now polish this frame. So here we're using the Auto Glim Super Resin Polish. We're not sponsored by Auto Glim, although I wish we were, but we're not sponsored by Auto Glim, but it's just a polish that I love you. I use this on all my cars and all my bikes. I just love this polish. It's a nice creamy polish. It polishes off beautifully with a microfiber towel. It leaves a lovely shine to anything that you're polishing with that. So we just polish the bike off with the Auto Glim resin polish. That'll just bring that paint out and just pop it out at you. I've always loved gloss bikes and this bike is one of those. It absolutely pops out once you've polished it. And I just love that. I love that reflection that you get when you polish a bike like this. So we're polishing it off and then we're also going to ceramic spray this bike. It just adds a little film coat into the bike that stops your road film and your dirt and everything quite sticking to that frame so fiercely, which means when you do clean it down as time moves on, they wash down so much nicer if they've been ceramic spray. Just gives that extra level to the paint that really makes a huge difference to your cleaning moving on. I mean, look at that bottom bracket area there around that bearing, how reflective that is. Where I'm putting that grease now, that reflection. I mean, you can't beat that. That's a lovely polish and then that ceramic spray before we start putting the bike back together. So we've got those Q-rings on the front there. I don't know if you've ever ridden on a Q-ring, but they give a lovely smooth ride. You're, you're putting your power through on the larger side of the ring and on your recovery stroke you've got the smaller ring so they're lovely to ride they're a very smooth ride when you're using a q-ring so now we're putting everything back together so the derailleurs go on then we've literally got this front brake pivot point that we're now putting in the rear always put a little bit of anti-seize on that thread because that's the reason why these get stuck it's a notorious problem with these and then we're actually just going to use a split pin in the front there so we're just going to put a little bit of grease on that 
just to help it pivot through the brake pads on their actuation because it's not quite as smooth as the pin that we've put on the back and that should stop any problem there of that pulling out or having an issue with that front brake where that thread had gone on that caliper. So now we're just putting a new Ultegra chain on here. The chain that was on there obviously was stretched out and so there we put the Ultegra original one back on there. And then we also had, which was one of the sort of known things when we came in, these buttons on the top of the shifters were actually programmed in for a computer for the left and right on the pages of the computer. But we're actually going to be programming these in for the customer as a shifter, so it'll be an up and down shift on the left and right buttons on the top of the hoods. But before we do that, we plug this into the computer and you can see here that we've got some updates to do on these components. So we'll update the components first, which is what we're now doing. Then I actually disconnect this from the bike, make sure it's all working. Then I reconnect it before I actually then do the alterations to the shifters. This is what I'm now about to do. So I'm just altering those buttons on the top, on the left and right. So I do each one individually, because sometimes with the DI2, it's a little bit temperamental if you try and encourage it to do too much at once. So I save each process and do each process as I go. And this B-screw needed an adjustment that would never have been adjusted correctly from the bike from when that was fitted originally. That B-screw adjustment will just help it with its shifting. It'll just perform a little bit nicer on the rear. It'll be worlds apart from even where it was when it came in. Just by adjusting that B-screw alone will make a huge difference to this bike. Check the brakes, front and rear. They're all working nice. No squealing, no noises. I'm happy with that. And then now the final process for us for servicing a bike is to go through it with a torque wrench and torque everything up which is what I'm now doing so do the shifters make sure they're not too tight or too loose the stem bolts and this one's a little bit tricky all of these giant propels with this hood they've got rubbers around the bottom of that and you can see that's had tape put around there they all break up it's just one of the downsides of that particular cockpit on this this bike that is what it is, I've seen that a lot, but that tape was already on the bike and that's actually quite a good resolution to solve that problem of them breaking down. So like I say, we continue through with the torque wrench, so the chain set, all through the mounts, anything we can find on the bike that needs torquing, we, we just check through. I mean, this saddle that was extremely loose, so it might have been that the previous owner had put his own saddle on and when he comes to sell the bike, he swapped that out. The rider of this bike would have maybe gone off on his first 50 miler and that saddle would have come loose and fallen off and just for the want of a torque wrench on it so it was very wise really to get just to service this bike before he went out on it get the di2 updated get a new chain on it new sealer in the tires so as if he's not gonna have any issues with punctures and this bike is now ready to go to its new owner for him to thoroughly enjoy and i hope he does it was quite an enjoyable service this one for me i really did enjoy doing this one so i hope you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed making it so don't forget to subscribe, drop a comment, and we will see you again next week. Bye for now.